Hey there, Soul Shines! It's Michelle here, and it is Tunisian Crochet Month for Things We're Making Thursday. Things We're Making Thursday, Things We're Making Thursday, Things We're Making Thursday, yeah. Things We're Making Thursday, Things We're Making Thursday, Things We're Making Thursday, yeah. Alrighty, so this month is Tunisian Crochet. Um, it is not my favorite form of crochet. I don't hate it. So I will say that. Um, Tunisian crochet uses hooks. Some of them are like this where it is um, long. Oh, I'm gonna go grab a couple more. So you have three basic styles. Sorry. You have the one that has a cord on it. Now some people get the fancy ones that have the interchangeable needles. So they have cords still. Um, the cord has a stopper, unlike knitting needles, that if you have a cord on a knitting needle, it will go and have the knitting needles on both ends. Um, but you, because when you're working Tunisian crochet, you can line up all of those stitches, like a lot of stitches on this cord. Um, if you're working on smaller projects, you can do, um, so it's got the crochet hook on this side and it's got a stopper on this side so it looks like a knitting needle with a hook. Um, and then you can get double ended ones. So it's got a hook on both sides. And these come in handy if you were working one technique for working in the round. So there's a lot of different kind of hooks. I actually want to see if I have the same. This is a, I don't remember what size cook this is, but I want to see if I have the same in this because this is driving me crazy. This will actually be easier for my project. So if I have the right size for that, I'm going to switch. Anyway, so I started out with my bag this month. And I hated it. I just, it didn't, it wasn't doing what I needed it to do for a bag. I'm not necessarily in love with what I did switch to, but I just, I don't know, I didn't bring it in with me. I did undo it, I finally, I said, after I did yesterday's video, I was like, I'm just gonna undo it. Uh, the biggest challenge was, is the way that I transitioned from knitting until um, Tunisian crochet meant when I was frogging, I left my um, knitting stitches live and I didn't want to put them back on a needle just to bind them off which was what I did so I had to be very careful in binding off so I didn't drop any stitches I did it I got past it it's all good we'll show you guys that probably Monday maybe if not then maybe Wednesday but Wednesday I don't know we'll see but the other thing I've been working on is a dishcloth and this is the back, so it's got the bumpy bits. It's definitely got the thickness of Tunisian. Um, this has, I'm using the knit stitch. The pattern that I followed, I'll leave the tutorial below. They use the simple stitch. And it just is a matter of where you stick your needle in, changes how it works. Um, how Tunisian crochet works is just like crochet, I would have my thing on the end, and then I have, I stick it in, and I pull it up, and you just keep putting loops on. So it looks like knitting by the time you've got all your loops across on, because you just keep grabbing these loops and go across. And so I will have loops all across here. Um, and then I have some increased stitches in the ends here, each end. And then, I will just show you, you work all the hair. You would then do a chain at the end and then you work off two. So this is where it's more like crochet because you just keep working off two stitches. And so then you get your little thing. And it's kind of nice because like crochet, um, 
If you have to frog, you don't lose all of your stitches. I have lost a row on this because this was all tangled up and when in untangling it, I somehow ended up um, f frogging that whole row. But like crochet, if I end here, I can put a stitch marker in there and I will not lose that spot. So the, it's kind of an interesting mix of knitting and crochet, but I don't think it's as much like knitting as some people say, although, got a knot here, um, this does have a knit look to it. So it looks like little knit stitches. And then this does look like purl stitches, but also like there's this extra layer inside of there that per knitting does not have. So it's kind of fun. Um, hopefully I do finish this this month. I don't love Tunisian crochet. Oh, I do have something I want to do though. I guess I'll leave that for a minute. Um, so if you've been following, you know that I made this gorgeous rose. Um, it is a very slow process, but eventually I'm hoping to have a centerpiece. Um, and I was thinking about it and I was like, this is the perfect month to make some of the leaves that I want to make because some of the techniques for leaves that I thought would be fun to try are actually Tunisian crochet. So um, I will probably be doing some of those this month just to um, add to the mix. So anyway, that's it for today. That's where I'm at. Now that this is untangled, and I've got the bag undone and my mystery yarn challenge is done. Maybe I can bring myself to work on this and finish it. I don't have a lot of yarn. Thank goodness for editing. So I don't have a lot of yarn. I've weighed this. This. So what I just have is like, I bought a kitchen scale and it's one where I can change the units which helps with working with grams, um, it helps with a lot of things. So if I weigh this, what do I have this on right now? I have it on pounds and ounces right now. So this end here is 0. 0.4. I'm gonna change the unit to 0. 0.46 ounces. And then this end that's got the yarn is 0.81. So I want to, so that I can pretty much use most of my yarn, I want to get this as wide and as big, either until I'm like, I, that's the size I want it, because this is like the side, this is the diagonal of a square. And so um, this side seems to be a little shorter, so I'm gonna go do my measuring on that side. Um, but I'm gonna go until this is like 0.6 ounces, because then this should be 0.6 and this should be 0.6. Because if I put it all together on here, 1.27, so 0 0.6, 0 0.6 should give me about half and then I can start doing my decreases and then I should use most of my yarn, which is exciting. Um, so I'm gonna see if I like this as a dishcloth, um, maybe make these once in a while. Um, Cause I don't, like I said, I don't hate any Asian crochet. It's just not my favorite. I think, the I have two reasons why it's not my favorite. One is that the particular hook that I'm using, that cord thing, I don't know if I can soften it um, but it actually keeps turning my hook so it makes things awkward because um, the, the cord is so tight that it keeps rotating my hook. So it seems like effort to keep my hook the direction that I want it. Um, and it's just a slower process because it's even slower in my opinion than knitting. But because um, it takes two passes you go across, pick up all your stitches, then you work them off. That is two passes to get one row of stitches. So in knitting, you do one pass, you got your row of knit your stitches. You do crochet, regular crochet, you go one across, you got your row of stitches. So it's a slower process. And so I could see for people who just use knitting and crochet for 
the process of things, it would be fine. I tend to be a project crocheter, project knitter. Um, I like to have a specific project, a person that I'm making it for, or like in the case of things that I'm giving away, a organization or an idea of where it will go. Um, I like to have, um, I have a project mindset when it comes to knitting and crocheting. Um, I don't necessarily, I'll pick up knitting and crocheting mostly to keep my hands busy while I'm doing other things. I hate just sitting and watching TV with nothing to do with my hands. So knitting and crocheting while watching TV is perfect for me. Um, while I'm waiting somewhere, it's nice to have something to pick up and do. So it's a combination of occupy my hands and a project to make. But because I am more project based, the slower process is hard for me. That's also why I really suck at making afghans is because the slower process. Like this got really hard as it got out here. But uh, because each section had different stitches, it also made it more fun, which is why I was able to finish that. Also because I put the pressure on myself by participating in the Mr. Yarn Challenge as a whip to get that done. Um, so, yeah. I think it's good to know that those kind of things about yourself. Are you a project knitter? Are you just a process knitter? Like you just like the, like the process of knitting and you'll just make and make and make and make and it doesn't really matter. Um, so then you could probably sometimes make blankets um, Tunisian crochet might actually be enjoyable for you, um, even though it's a slower process than I particularly like. So anyway, just my thoughts on the, pro the process, my thoughts on Tunisian crochet, because like I said, I don't hate it. It's just a lot slower of a process for me, and I'm struggling with my current needle, which is why if I have the one that looks like a knitting needle, if I have that size which i might i'm not sure i'm gonna have to get out my gauge and measure to make sure i get the right size but if i have that size i will switch to finish this because i think that will make the whole process easier anyway remember to let your light shine through your creations whatever they be enjoy things we're making thursday month oh uh, in the description box you will find a list of the upcoming months you will find a link to the facebook group Ye, and we'd like to thank Jess uh, from J Hook Magic. I hate it when I forget her channel name. Um, she's the one who provided the jingle that people use. If you're a content creator, we would love it if you would join us and share your videos. If you are not a content creator, you can just share in the Facebook group. You can share through um, some of us. I love adding and editing in mine. So. Um, if you want to um, say, hey, can you put these in my vi your video and share, I would actually really love that. I think it would be awesome. So if you want to participate in any of the months, um, you don't have to have a channel. You don't have to, you know, you can still participate and join in on the fun of making stuff. So if you want to make Tunisian crochet this month, you can join us and it's awesome. And if you don't, that's okay too. Next month, what are we doing next month? I'm gonna look. <sighs> Things we're making Thursday next month is May, so we're making household items, which I'm kind of doing here, but I'm trying to think what I actually want to make. I may wait until closer to the end of the month to think about what I'm gonna make next month. Household items. You can knit, you can crochet. Tunisian crochet is obviously a very specific it's technically try Tunisian crochet and I've already done it so to me it's not trying it's just doing something again because I tried Tunisian crochet 30 years ago or more actually more than 30 years ago probably more like 35 and so it's not a try it out thing it's just like oh well maybe I'll pick a project to work on I did learn a new working in the round technique from doing my bag so that was fun Anyway, back to this, like I said, in the description, I'm also gonna put the tutorial for, um, 
I'm going to put two tutorials for leaves so that if you want to try Tunisian crochet leaves, you can do that. Um, those ones you don't even need a special hook for just to make the little leaves because you don't need that much space on your hook. And well, oh, I was going to leave the tutorial for this and you can just do the simple stitch or you can learn how to do the knit stitch and just um, do like I did and just wherever she did a simple stitch, I did a knit stitch and just that's how it works. Anyway, enough rambling. Remember to let your light shine to your creations. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.